this is my most detailed exterior renders I've ever done in Blender and today I'm going to be taking you through how I actually created this scene. If you've ever struggled with realistic lighting in Blender, placing vegetation naturally, or even just making your renders feel alive, you've come to the right place. I'll walk you through from start to finish through the entire scene, sharing secrets, tips, and tricks I've learned in the archivist industry over four years. Plus, at the end, I'll even teach you a very simple AI trick that you can use to take your render even further. And if you want feedback on your projects, you can check out my free Discord. There's a link in the description. So let's jump into it. All right, so this is what the scene looks like when I jump into Cycles view of Blender. Now you'll notice it does look a little bit different to the actual final render. And that's mainly because I've got some of the vegetation turned off. So starting with the camera, I really wanted to pick a quite a tight focal length. So I did 50 millimeters and that just kind of creates quite a nice sharp linear composition. If I go to down, down to something like 18 or 10, it's going to be really wide and that's more of a fisheye effect. So I really wanted to create a nice tight kind of landscape shot and 50 millimeters is pretty good for that. The next setting that I chose was enabling pro lens, which is a really cool add on. You don't need it but it just creates a bit of depth of field. Um, I chose a f-stop of 5.6 and that's just kind of like really good for a 50 millimeter focal length. If this makes absolutely no sense to you, don't worry about it. Just play around with focal length. Depth of field is kind of an added bonus, but the real magic comes in here with the composition in terms of layering the foreground elements. You can see the vegetation creates almost a frame to allow the eyes into the scene. And I did that with some vegetation, but really with the camera placement, I wanted to make sure that this was centered in kind of this house up here was, um, you know, just off to the side with the cool bridge in the center. It's a pretty standard composition. I mean, you, you can't really go wrong with that. Moving on to the lighting, I chose a HDRI that actually has a really, really cool rustic background to it. I will share that on kind of link in the description. You can actually get it for free on Polyhaven. It just kind of created the perfect environment and mood that I wanted. The sun angle just kind of worked perfectly perfectly with the background. So the actual HDRI I picked for this is this one here. I didn't even Forestburg Mountain Lockout 16K. Um, I really needed a high resolution HDRI because if you're using it as a background, you don't want it to be super pixelated. Even though with my camera settings, enabling depth of field actually blurs the background and creates a really, really nice kind of effect. And it also helps to blend in the foreground kind of mid-ground elements as well. And the lighting direction here was chosen mainly to allow the landscape tree elements to actually create some really cool shadows up and down the landscape. And I chose a lighting to the side of the building because side lighting is great. I mean, it, it's, it's such a standard angle of lighting that yeah it's just easily it works so easily um you don't have to mess around too much i really try to avoid having the sun behind the camera because it actually wrecks the whole scene the materials look weird and flat so yeah i really wanted to pick quite a dramatic time of day which is like golden hour um, to create that quite a tuscany french italian landscape kind of feeling and picking the sun direction off to the side just worked perfectly. These kind of shadows wouldn't be possible without that kind of effect. So I'm gonna show you exactly what changing the sun angle does to the composition. I've just turned off the grass because it is so heavy. My scene is borderline gonna just crash. So if I change the rotation here, this is the rotation to get the sun kind of along the side. If I change this to like zero, Let's just see what that does. Okay, <laughs> there's actually this cool thing that's actually in the HDRI, which is cool. I just don't want to see it. So let's get out of the view real quick. And I'm just going to change this rotation until it's behind the camera. You might already know this. You might already know it's going to kind of look terrible, but it's really important that you see the difference that HDRI direction makes. It really is 
like if you want a good render picking the right sun angle is one of the easiest things that you can do to get a good render okay so we're pretty much behind the camera now you can see this is where the camera is well it's actually way back here because yeah i wanted a nice zoom kind of lens and you have to pull the camera way back even though it looks like it's right up there it's actually not so yeah this is with the sun directly behind the camera okay <laughs> if i turn pro lens off real quick because it's so realistic that if the sun is coming from behind you it's actually going to create some cool effects look at this this looks horrendous okay <laughs> you really want to make sure that um the sun isn't right behind the camera if i keep pushing this around to like i don't know 280 that's starting to starting to be okay 290 we're going to keep moving this across and notice how it's sh it shifting the background as well you really want to make sure that you're balancing that let's keep moving it okay this feels good this is pretty much where it was at. Let's keep moving it. This still feels okay. This feels great. It really doesn't matter where the sun is as long as it's not behind the camera and it's, you know, it's kind of either off to the side or it can even be behind the, the focal point. And that actually creates some really amazing um, cinematic kind of vibes to it if you don't have a brick wall right there. Okay, so let's reset this back to 320 and I'm going to jump onto the material creation. So I chose the polygon add-on for their really cool sandstone, uh, the, the, the sandstone stone wall. Um, <laughs> that's a tongue twister. I did apply a bit of a trick at the end to remove the tiling, but you can see it's a pretty damn good looking material. Wow, this focal focal point focal lens is insane none of this is actually done but you can see that's kind of the material i did actually do a little bit of vertex painting to let, let's just fix this focal length because it's giving me vertigo let's do like 20 okay that's better so i did do a bit of vertex painting and let's just walk through the material how i did that i'm not going to go into vertex painting this is just a behind the scenes but basically i've got a few different effects within the principal bsdf that tie in to the base color so i've got kind of a black mold effect and by the way blender guru has a great kind of tutorial on this i've got a black mold effect which is using a certain kind of vertex color which i've just literally painted on a lime wash and you know all sorts of different things but in terms of the actual material creation it's really straightforward there's nothing really to explain there but the actual material i used i think was yeah our uh, sandstone stone wall the concrete was a it's another polygon material you can literally get um some really good ones off uh, polyhaven for free um there's nothing wrong with that but I think Polygon's quality is amazing. Um, so yeah, that concrete is kind of what I used. You can see it's like, it's actually not super detailed in the actual house because it really, it's just viewed from the side. But I'm going to be doing some really cool renders showing all of this in its glory eventually. Um, but I just wanted to tick the, the money shot off first. All right, so the glass is also a bit of a specific shader, which I've used for years now. And it feels weird to say years. It feels like I've just started learning, but I've been doing this for over four years now. I've been using this kind of setup here. It's not just a standard glass shader. I'm mixing in a glass BSDF with a transparent BSDF, and then I'm using a light path kind of node to separate out a few elements and basically what that means is that when you've got your glass it actually allows light to pass through more realistically like for example here if you use the glass shader you're probably not going to get super realistic light rays to pass through but with this i just find it works really really well so that's kind of the glass and then basically the ground material here is just another 
dirt, this kind of dirt texture from Polygon. But in the final render, you don't even see that. It's just really to cover up any spots of grass that aren't there. And those are the three key materials which I've chosen for this project. But really the most important one is the stone. And again, there's a little trick I've used at the end to just kind of alter that and get rid of any more variation in tiling. And the last key element to the scene was obviously the vegetation. It is so important for the scene and it really was resting on the quality of the vegetation and just kind of creating that beautiful landscape vibe and allowing it to blend in with the HDRI environment really nicely. So for the environment, I mainly used trees from the 3D Shaker trees pack. There's an affiliate link in the description. I have used their stuff since I started, you know, my, my blender journey and their quality is unmatched. Like it is insane. And their blender trees pack is so big. You're never going to run out of variation. Obviously this isn't all the trees that you see in the scene because it will crash <laughs> if I put them all in there. But basically using the GeoScatter plugin as well as some of these trees um, have kind of really created a amazing effect and it's just allowed it to feel very natural and provided all the variation that I needed. And basically there's a few key trees that which I've hand placed but then pretty much everything else is uh, 3D Shaker. And then with the GeoScatter though, like with the grass, I've actually used a biome on GeoScatter, which has a few bushes and it also has some kind of grass. And basically what it does is it, it automatically scatters the 3D Shaker assets as well as it adds its own one in there. There's some really cool tutorials online. I've tried other things, other add-ons, but honestly, like I've used Polygon for ages and I just know how to use it. And it's really, really good. Um, I highly recommend investing in good tools because um, it's just going to make your workflow way better and you're going to be able to be more creative. You're not going to have to like spend time doing menial tasks. But a key part of this scene was managing the memory. And I literally just did a PC upgrade at the start of the year. I've got 64 gigs of RAM. I've still got my old RTX 3070. It's not super old, but it's a few years old. I rendered this with my CPU. However, even though I've got a lot of RAM, I still have to hide pretty much all of these and then have them on in the rendered. Like when I actually render, all of these turn on. But if I'm actually working in the scene, pretty much all of them are off. Just the, a few key ones to make sure that I'm, I'm actually working with what is in the scene. So managing your memory is so vital and it's almost the most important thing because you can't just chuck anything in. It's got to be rendered. It's got to be worked with. Um, so work within your PC specs. And onto the actual render settings, I did render this with my CPU because of how big it is. I, I did a 1920 by 1080. I exported as a 16-bit TIFF that I edited in Photoshop. I did a 2000 sample render using the Intel, was it Intel? No, geez, I shouldn't be using that. I don't even have an Intel CPU anymore. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you can see a few more little tweaks like the white balance sort of doesn't really alter it that much. Yeah, I use AGX, medium high contrast. Just get it looking good in the viewport, hit F12. Um, I literally didn't use any compositing, any settings, just chucked it straight into Photoshop and you should just chuck in whatever editing software you work with best. I wish I wasn't so good at Photoshop and I wish I was better at like an open source software like Darktable or uh, like GIMP or something. But honestly, I'm, I'm so efficient at Photoshop and I don't get good results with other software that I just, well, I use Photoshop, unfortunately. And just as a final secret tip I used for this project was MNML, which is a kind of architecture... AI assist for renders. Now I have never used AI for rendering. I, I honestly, I kind of disagree with it, but I th was really curious about it. I really liked the idea of doing everything myself, but I just couldn't quite get that kind of level of quality with the environment in terms of blending in with the HDRI and just filling in the gaps a little bit. And so I really pushed it as far as I could, but really when I put it into the software, it absolutely blew me away. 
And so what I did was the render enhancer. You can kind of chuck in your existing render. So let's put that in here. And by the way, this is how it looks before AI. I really pushed this as far as I possibly could. Um, I could have maybe gotten the same results with AI, but honestly, I just didn't really have the time. And that's, I think, where AI comes in useful. You don't want to use it to do your entire job, but you, if you use it to kind of upscale and assist your rendering, it can be really productive and enhance your creativity. And that was really what I wanted. I wanted to upscale this render. I didn't want to change anything. So if I go back and forth between the before AI and then the final, you'll see what I mean. This is after AI and this is before. Pretty much all the elements are there. It's basically sharpening everything and it's just kind of giving a little bit more detail that you wouldn't get otherwise. And I did actually mask in the AI version because there were a few elements that I wanted to keep and it was kind of destroying a few bits and pieces. Um, but that's really before and after. And by using this free tool, I didn't even pay to use it. It's uh, You can just literally use it for free. Just chuck in your prompt and let's just say Tuscany Tower French Landscape. Let's go accept all. Let's go generate and let's see what happens. I can't exactly remember the the proper prompt that I use, um, but let's just see what happens and see what the kind of difference is. So obviously this isn't the actual result that I showed you before. Um, and that's where it can be a little bit tricky with your prompts. I really just urge you to experiment with different prompts and really play around with it. But you can see even if all you do is mask in a little bit of the AI vegetation, like that's a pretty cool improvement. And it's really not cheating. It's not a cop out because you're creating the scene you're just enhancing the details. Another kind of key aspect of using AI upscaling was for the cladding. The stone wall, the kind of stone um, cladding was tiling too much and I didn't have the time to play around with the best way to kind of remove tiling and I just wanted to get it out there. And I think by using AI for upscaling your vegetation, and your cladding. It's kind of the best way to retain your own personal vision, but you're using AI to enhance the realism and you're still kind of telling it what to do. You're not letting it take the lead. And by the way, if you experiment with this, make sure to chuck it on my free Discord in the render feedback channel and let me know in the description below your own experiences with using AI. If you've tried to achieve a scene like this, I'd love to see it. So I look forward to seeing you in my next videos. And if you're new here, you may as well stay on my channel. I've got a whole bunch of free tutorials. If you're new to Blender or even if you wanted some intermediate advanced tutorials, there's heaps there. So check it out and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.